Kevin, let's say someone knows what their quote subject is. Day one of shooting, what are they doing? What are some of the things that they're doing? They're walking into this person's environment. How are they capturing the mood of this person's place, et cetera? Well, hopefully, you know, you've established some sort of relationship going in and you've talked to them either in person or on the phone and you've had a number of emails and you, you know, to get them to say, yes, I'll let you be a part of my life and film me for any, you know, whatever amount of time. But you, you have to know you're going to be doing probably a lot of interviews, you know, um, maybe. But the, the first one, if you want to get something in, in the can, so to speak, and get a, a good hour in the, in, in the can, you're going to go over and set a nice, you know, scene, make them comfortable. Kind of, uh, you've kind of talked about what kind of questions you're going to ask them. You don't need to show them anything. Sometimes if they ask for a list of questions, if I'm doing a television show, I'll generally not want to do that. But if, if they insist, I'll, I'll give them some sample questions. That's not a big, a big thing. Um, make them comfortable and just have a conversation with them. You know, um, let them know that um, we can start and stop and do this again. You know, if they don't like their answer or they want to, re- uh, you know, you know, amend something. Um, so you're going to get, you know, hopefully you can get, you know, just to start the ball rolling, get a nice interview for an hour or so. Don't wear them out. Don't do three hours. Just get an hour and get some B-roll around their house, maybe going down uh, to what they're doing that's maybe related or not even related to the topic you're talking about. But you're trying to create a character. You're trying to create a person. So you want to see them living. You want to see them doing their things. So even if this is a show about a Vietnam veteran or something, you know, his family's part of his life possibly. So you're going to show the family. You're going to get to know them if, if they're part of the documentary. You're just trying to, you know, gather all the materials that are really in their world, their environment, their house, their work, their friends, if they're applicable. So you're just trying to get, because these are building blocks you need, because you need a lot of them. You're going to need, you know, depending on what the show is, you might need, you know, a lot of personal stills. You might need archival material. We can get to that. You know, it's a whole different topic. But you just really want to gain their trust and um, begin this process because you're probably going to want to go back several times as they go through their life or chase this dream or whatever you're you're filming when you're the topic of your documentary. You're want to you're going to want to go back and catch up with these people. In terms of uh, border war, which you, which we mentioned before, I would periodically visit the widow of this sh- deputy sheriff, see where she is, watch her make the phone calls to her congressman and senator and saying, please, let's try to get this guy back from Mexico. We know where he's hiding. They won't extradite him. We've talked to the president. I've written letters. I see her writing letters. So, you know, you get your B-roll. You're gathering all of the elements you need to create this story because you're not going to want to just show a talking head for 90 minutes. You want to, you need coverage. You need to see them doing things. You need archival photos and you need them, you know, just making it visually uh, interesting to the audience so you, you know, so you have that, that coverage. So that's just one part of building this, this, this building that's going to twist and turn as you, the more material you gather. So, you know, I always tell my students that I'll make an outline at the beginning, but I'm, you have to be completely open to it twisting and turning because the more interviews you get in, the more oh, you'll you'll learn things, you find out things. Maybe you don't need that extra interview. Maybe this takes the story in a whole new direction, so you need to get an extra interview. So it's like building a building, but where the blueprint is always changing, and it should change, and you should react to it. You you don't want to be in a box and think, this is exactly how my documentary is going to look, and then have all these things come in that make it better and, and say, no, I can't put that in because that wasn't in my outline. No, you want to be free and make this a sculpture and build it as it goes. And there's, you know... There's a there's a uh, Alex Gibney movie out on the, on Julian Assange now that I believe at some point in filming, you know, uh, Assange does not cooperate. But at some point, the filmmaking team figures out that this guy is very complex, and they can either call him a maniac or a genius or whatever. But he's got a, a, a massive ego, and and he's difficult to work with. His people, so that kind of takes it in different. It adds a layer of 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 context to these characters and the the situation. So, you know, you have to be open to the story twisting and turning as you go.